This week has been all about battleships and what a good week it has been. I've really enjoyed this project and I've learned so much from it. I've also had a second interview this week, so that was rather interesting. Welcome to the series where I show you what I'm doing to try and become a web developer. My name is Craig and this is week 35. Let's dive right in and see how much time I've spent on web development this week. The total time this week is 18 hours and 50 minutes, and that's broken up as 35 minutes for tutorials, not a lot there, 13 hours and 10 minutes for projects, and then five hours, five minutes for career stuff. This week is down quite a bit, and I'm 100% blaming my mom for this because they've just got this little puppy, and it's so adorable. I'm just, yeah, Thursday and Friday were pretty much a write-off because I was with the puppy. I'm not actually going to go over the interview in this video. I'm going to keep this video focused on battleships. So if you want to find out what happened in my second interview, please hit that like and subscribe button and keep your eyes peeled for the next video. So in terms of battleships, I'm going to quickly go over my plan again from the last video and then I'm just going to dive straight over the computer, a bit of show and tell, tell you what went well, what didn't go well and probably just what I would do to improve it. So if you see my previous videos, you know I was kind of struggling and I'd get a bit frustrated with how I was progressing with battleships. So I took a step back and went back to the drawing board. Instead of thinking about it in terms of components and bits of code, I really went down the route of user experience. So in my mind there were four screens the user goes through. There's the welcome page where they put in their username. The second screen is where they place their ships. The third screen is going to be the main screen where they battle against the AI. And then the final screen is the game over one. So the first screen, that was going to have a just an input field with some validation. The second screen, I really wanted to learn about dragging elements. And this is a bit of a tangent, but whenever I build a project, I always try to learn something from it. Like I have a particular kind of goal in mind, I guess. So yes, the Battleships project here was mainly focused on Jest and JavaScript testing, but I wanted to try and get a few more things out of that. First being learning how to drag elements around, and the second one is a bit more experience with the HTML canvas. So that's how I built the game boards. I've actually used canvas elements. I'm really interested in there. There's a few things I want to do with them in the future. So this was great. The third screen itself was going to have two canvas elements, both representing a board. The AI board is the one that the player attacks and you can't see any ships on there. And then you've got the player board where you'll be able to see your own ships and that is where the AI will attack. And then finally the game over screen, it will say who the winner is, how many ships they've got remaining. And then it has the option to either rematch or start a new player. So let's dive right over the computer and let's go over the battleships. So here we have battleships. I'm going to go over the desktop version first, then the mobile version. I'll go over a little bit of code, but I don't want to go over the code too much because this is really a learning project for other people and I don't want to give anything away. I've got my first welcome page here, a link to website, YouTube, GitHub, a link to the Odin project, and then the way to enter your username. So this has got a validation on key up and on button click. Pretty simple validation. It must not be blind, gotta be greater than three, and it can't have spaces. So let's just put my name in. And then we're on the second screen. This is where I've learned how to drag the ships on. So this is a canvas element, but these ships are not. They're actually divs with more divs. And how to place them is that you can either click to rotate them and then drag them onto the board. So let's just place a few things on. So there is one issue which I have, and that is once the ships have been placed, you can't actually move them again. So that is, it's not great for the user, especially if they misplace a ship. But let's go over the battle page. Two game boards here, both HTML canvases. The AI is the one that will be attacking, and then it's got my name, Craig's board on the left hand side there. I do really like this overlay to show whose turn it is. Oh, I've hit a ship already. Got a little bit of a delay on the AI, so there's about 300 milliseconds before and after. Just to kind of pause the game a little bit and show that the AI's actually hit. The key at the top, I really like that, showing that it's missed. However, I didn't want to use canvas elements again, which is what all these squares are built from as well, drawing using the rect function. So I've actually used a linear gradient to create this like cross and line through, which was quite nice. There, we've just sunk a ship. So so that's changed both positions for the squares. I should be able to win. So the AI is a random hit. It 
make sure it doesn't hit a spot that's already been attacked but it is just random so you're very very likely to win And here we've got the game over screen, so it tells you who the winner is, the number of ships remaining, and then the option to rematch or to play a new game, like a, a new player. So we'll just do a new player. I'm going to go to the mobile version. So it does work for mobile. There's a few things that I've changed. So within the JavaScript, I check the, I think it's window or client X. I can't remember what, which function I use to check the width of the screen. But if it's like below 700, I change the size of the squares and the HTML canvas, but everything works. So how I dragged the elements before on desktop was to use drag start, drag end and drag over on the HTML canvas, but that does not work on mobile, on touch devices. So what I've had to do instead, and it's probably why the fail things are coming up now, is on touch start and create the dragging class and then on touch end i have to check whether or not the touch end is within the canvas if it is within the canvas i then run the checks is this ship valid so it does work but as you can tell you can't actually see where you're placing the ships that well whereas on the desktop version there was this drag kind of ghost image and just on mobile it, it's just not as nice i would say so that's definitely something that needs working on I would say it's slightly annoying that you've got to scroll slightly to see both the boards. But generally the mobile version here works okay. Let's go straight over to what didn't go that well. So first up, this whole project was about learning how to do JavaScript testing using Jest or some other testing suite. So I was using Jest and I would say I need more practice using Jest. As if this is the first project, so I think it's understandable that I did struggle a little bit with it, but I'm trying to find a way to practice it a little bit more. And then the second thing that really isn't that great is I feel that my code is quite messy, I'll be honest. I'll just bring it up here briefly. So I've got all I've got the canvas, the canvas hits, so that's the squares. The game file is all about kind of managing the screen states. The game board itself is the game boards, you know, one for the AI, general functions. This helps with the game file. You got the players and the ships. So what I really want to do actually with the game is to split off the different screens into different files. As you can tell here, I've got like functions for screen two and functions for screen one and screen three and things like that. I think that would have been a really good way to do it, but that meant I would be passing this player controller back and forth between all the files and it would just get a little bit messy at the end. So I've left it how it is. Maybe in the future I'll work on improving it. So where would I take this next? Well, there's a few things that could be added or improved. I'm not sure if this is an actual rule in battleships, but I think when you hit a ship, your turn continues. Whereas in my game, I haven't done that. So that would be a nice little functionality to add in. Second would be to make a smarter AI. So that means when an AI has hit a ship, but not sunk a ship, it then attacks kind of in the similar sort of area until the ship's been sunk rather than just doing random attacks constantly. Third would be to make sure the player can drag the ships again once they've been placed on the canvas. I think that would be a really nice feature to include. Fourth would be to create a two-player mode. There would be a bit of changing that needs to go on within my code, so you wouldn't be allowed to have two boards showing at the same time here. You would have to pass the device between people and add another username input field, things like that. And finally, what I think would be a really good feature to add on this one, on the game over screen, add another HTML canvas element which actually shows the winning board and it will show where the remaining ships are placed. I think that would be a really nice feature. Generally, I've really enjoyed this project. I probably got off to a little bit of a rocky start, but this project's great. It is challenging as it should be at this stage of the game, but it's well worth completing. That is everything for week 35. So next week's actually going to be a really short week because I'm going away to Scotland to watch the downhill mountain biker. Really looking forward to that. So I'll probably only do maybe two or three days of web development. But in terms of web development, 
there's a couple of things I'll be doing. One is I actually noticed an issue with my portfolio website and I forgot to link my GitHub repos to the projects. So that's going to be a quick fix, but that's something I need to do. And then I'll just continue with the Odin project. Next up is a bit more advanced GitHub stuff and using GitHub in the real world which seems really exciting. Links to everything will be down below if you wanna go check them out. And as always, I'd greatly appreciate your thoughts and advice. If you have enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit that like button. And if you want to see more, then please subscribe. Hope you all have a good day, and I'll catch you later.